Hi, everyone. My name is Amir Bozorogzadeh. I am the co-founder and CEO of Virtually, the company that is taking neurosciences and virtual reality in order to address the huge impact that cognitive disorders have on society, both in terms of the impact on people's wallets, uh, of course, their quality of life. When we talk about disorders like ADHD or ones that are even contingent to uh, neurological disorders associated to COVID, perhaps a traumatic brain injury. Ultimately, brain and mental disorders have a very big range of effects on how they can make our quality of life that much worse. I think the biggest and most impactful area that needs to be addressed and the one that dwarfs all other cognitive disorders is ultimately the dementias, and in particular, Alzheimer's disease, which even last year just cost the world, the global market, $1 trillion. And there is no solution. There is no cure. You can only manage the symptoms once and if you should befall it. However, that we also know that cognitive illnesses can be detected up to 25 years before they onset. And so even though we have no solutions for conditions like Alzheimer's disease, once they happen, we are able to be able to um, proactively be able to predictively and forecast this kind of condition when it happens um, to start to become a subtle indicator in ways that you wouldn't personally notice, but perhaps with cognitive assessment solutions that we have available to us, we could potentially be able to notice the effects of this type of disorder many years before it onset so that we can actually proactively address it and so at the very least delay the clinical onset. One of the great things about screen-based devices is that they're available completely in our pockets. However, this is where most cognitive assessment solutions are and they ultimately exclude the body. Virtual reality's superpower is that it's the first embodied digital format that actually triggers my whole body into believing that this experience is real. We're talking about a cognitive format that is engaging not just my cognition, but also my emotions, my experiential, my vestibular balance system, my autonomic nervous system, everything believes that this multi-sensory environment is real. And it's ecologically valid in such a way that we can be able to do things that was never possible before. More than that, it means the data quality is of the highest level far superior to anything from a 2D screen-based device. From a point of view of a cognitive assessment solution, we're actually much more powerful from the point of view of the level and depth of data that we're capturing. We're capturing volumetric data sets, about 200,000 data points every two minutes, where we're not just capturing the psychological and game interaction data, but also physical data like postural and positioning and accelerometry of movement. We're also, with partners like HP, collecting physiological and biometric data like pupil dilation tracking, heart rate variability, and skin connectivity. And with our AI learning algorithms, we are able to actually calculate a person's cognitive load. Are they focused? Are they bored? Are they stressed out? Are they overwhelmed? We know this in real time. And so ultimately, you are looking at a virtual reality experience that is not just nice to have, but it offers a critical use case when it comes to the quality of data, health data, and educational training sort of data, as well as the depth of data that could be potentially even serve as a, as a source for a whole new array of digital phenotypes or digital health biomarkers, algorithms that can detect the early onset of these kind of conditions, like I had mentioned decades before. And so at Virtually, we have created a library of neuropsychological assessment tools into these fun, short, and closed loop games that each test and train a different cognitive function, like memory, and, you know, information processing, speed and attention skills. But also because of virtual reality spatial orientation, we can also be able to test and train other types of spatialized categories like spatial audio awareness or motor controls. We created 15 of these neuropsychological cognitive VR games. And in fact, although it kind of spans across these seven neat categories like memory and attention, we actually specifically designed the games to target much more niche and subtle categories like memory breaks down into short-term memory, working memory, long-term memory. 
And we, in fact, are covering about 18 of these child categories. So we are really nuanced in being able to give you as a user or as a clinician for your target population, a really nuanced and detailed and subtle landscape of a person's cognitive and mental fitness. We also have a very sophisticated enterprise uh, data portal um, that we license to organizations like hospitals or uh, clinical academic partners that are doing clinical protocols and studies. Perhaps they're running uh, population uh, studies of their own or even using it for use cases like rehabilitation. What this portal has is not just the typical bells and whistles of a SaaS platform like user management and reporting and, and third-party data um, API integrations and these types of things, but also we've created companion applications like remote control that allows you to remote navigate the experience of the person in VR without them having to remove the headset. You can just remote navigate the whole experience using your, your tablet or your phone. We have a survey engine that allows you to put surveys before and after the session, <clears throat> which is really great for uh, clinical studies and, and, and uh, treatments. How we stand apart from the neuropsychological assessment tools of the first row and the, and the brain turning apps of the second row is again, VR goes above and beyond just typing and tapping with your fingers and thumb on a screen as we engage and track the whole body, not just the cognition and ultimately from the point of view of the VR landscape, the companies that are in that area competitive to us, they are very specialized in areas like athletic conditioning and sports training. They're not agnostic as we are towards a range of different cognitive uh, areas and domains. As of this point, we actually have over 38,000 early registered users, about 150, up to 150 people register every day in, in four uh, different languages. We're in the process of supporting Arabic, Japanese, and several others this year. Ultimately, we have two clinical studies right now underway, both focused on Alzheimer's disease and slowing down cognitive deterioration, the point to be, uh, be regulatory approved so we can be the new gold standard of cognitive assessment and training, as well as ultimately being a digital therapeutic that can be reimbursed by payers. As of uh, late last year, we came out of stealth and closed an initial 1.5 million in sales to license our, our solution, meaning not just the VR application, but also the, the backend enterprise portal. And we have about uh, 5 million in, in uh, pending proposals for this year. We are continuously building up our range of games, uh, launching a, a standalone assessment module in uh, the coming months. And constantly building up more partnerships with academic and clinical partners that want to align with us and apply our solution across various domains, not just the Alzheimer's, but human performance programs, ADHD, um, types of neurological is issues due to COVID or chemo brain, or, or of course, um, all sorts of different conditions in our life where cognitive fitness is becoming more and more important, not just in and of itself, but in its relationship to our mental health and happiness and well-being. Um, ultimately, our team is a mix, of course, of scientists, uh, particularly neuroscientists, cognitive scientists, and collaborating with game developers to make this intersection of virtual reality and the neurosciences illustrative of what can happen when all these emerging technologies come together and unlock the power of the neurosciences to help us transcend so many of the challenges that are facing us today and increasingly will as our population of our, you know, of, of, of all our demographics keep on shifting towards a more and more um, older adult skewed population as they already are in the Middle East and Asia and Europe in which the US, for example, will only start to see that same gravity um, by 2030. Thank you so much for your attention and for the opportunity to share our work at Virtual Leap with you. Please uh, feel free to email me at bottom left uh, at amirvirtually.com if you have any questions or would like to explore any potential partnerships and collaborative opportunities. Thank you so much for your time again.